10, 9, 8. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Seven, six, five, four. I was born a male. I started living as a female when I was uh, 19 years old. Had a sex change when I was 30 years old. Um, I've now been living as a woman for 28 years and I fully regret this. It, nobody can change genders. It's impossible. It's delusional. It's a mental illness. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Once I finally had the surgery, I went, oh, this was the wrong thing to do. It was the wrong thing to do to, to cut off my male anatomy. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. The fact of the matter is the 40% of people who are attempting suicide are people who regret ever changing genders. Lift off, Dr. Knight. my alarm for right there around four o'clock uh, to get up but usually I wake up beforehand it's as though God just wakes me up I read the Bible and then I pray and then I try to be still and, and, and listen uh, for his voice his guidance hi my name is Billy Burley I'm living here in Lompoc in this house, and I used to work for NASA. Y'all come on in, and let me show y'all around the house a little bit. So the weather over here in Lompoc is exceptional. We don't have air conditioning over here, and so we keep the doors and windows open for a good bit throughout the year. I was a skinny little introverted kid. Had a speech impediment and tried to talk, but a lot of people didn't understand me. My body told me that uh, I belong with the boys, but my thoughts, my mind was saying that I belonged with the girls. And I didn't know which way to go. Wanted to be like my sisters. I thought. I should be like my sisters. And when my older sister started wearing makeup, I started uh, playing with some of her makeup uh, in the bathroom. And then in the sixth grade, when I was uh, on the summer league swim team, and we had a new diving coach. Well, what he would do is when he had a chance, he would uh, play with me. Uh, he would fondle me. And try to get, get me to have an erection and just continue to play with me. Carmelli, I'm gonna have to shut you into a room. Can we pause for just a moment? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, come on, Carmel, let's get you into a, a room back here. You are going to keep moving around. Come on. Quiet, bad dog, bad dog. Hold one moment. I will try to silence the dog. Dottie, Dottie, go lay down, lay down, go lay down. First off, my name is Renee Jacks, and I'm an author. I've written eight books so far, three of them to do with transsexuality. I was born male. Uh, grew up in a very conservative Republican family. 
My father was pretty much absent um, most of my childhood. He was an alcoholic. Uh, my mother was mentally ill. The childhood was so troubled and tr so traumatic that in retrospect, I was able to look at it and uh, realize that there was no way I was getting out of childhood normal. You go and you take a shower and you're there to get clean, but every time I had to take off my clothes, every time I went to bathe, you know, there's no getting around the fact that I wasn't a girl, that I was a boy. And that really is the one memory that sticks out is just how much I hate uh, uh, my penis, hated my penis. Uh, by the time I left uh, high school, when I was 18, I was cross-dressing most of the time once I was away from school. And um, a couple years afterwards, I ended up in San Francisco, which had a very small gay community. And I started, uh, I had made the decision by the time I was about 20 to start living full time as a girl. When you start dating people, and if you pass well enough, the whole purpose is, are you a transsexual or are you a woman? And my, in my mind, I was always a woman. I'm wanting to date, and I'm not telling the men that I'm dating that I have a, a penis. And so when they find out, they become violent. They, uh, there were a couple instances where I was beaten very badly. I'm Miro Djordjevic, I'm a surgeon and a urologist, and I'm a leader of Belgrade Center for Genital Reconstructive Urology. Our center is very well known, especially for transgender surgery, and we perform all types of transgender surgery, male to female, female to male, redo surgery with possible complications, and one of the uh, very, very uh, actual now, reversal surgery in regretful after uh, one of another one way in, in transgender transformation. We, we try always to, to make a genitalis to be first very functional and then to be uh, more acceptable in aesthetical uh, view. If we discuss about male to female, our results are much better. Why? Because in one surgery we create a completely uh, normal uh, female genitalia, and these persons usually can have a sexual intercourse, can uh, enjoy in sexual activity, according to our experience, more than 90%. Transgender surgery starts to be a very popular for both persons and doctors. And you can, you can find uh, too many jokes on this field. Oh, I'm going to, to make my genitalia to be different like now, and I will be a very nice lady, or I will be a, a very strong man, or something like this. And after that, after some, some event like uh, alcohol or drug abuse or something like this, you're awake from anesthesia with a new genitalia. The main milestone <clears throat> was uh, finding a doctor who would give me the hormones. If I get the hormones, female cross-sex hormones, um, my life will be perfect. And then you think, well, if I can only get my voice, <clears throat> get my male voice up here, then that, that'll make me, you know, just happy. And then you think the next thing is, well, if I can get breast implants, um, I, I, that's all I need. It's never enough. And finally, if you've gone through the therapy and you can convince a doctor to start cutting on you, you go and you have a sex change. I had my sex change in 1990. And in the back of my mind, I didn't think, I thought it might be like all the other stuff I had done, but I was hoping, just hoping that that would make me feel complete. get in there. So why would you tell your neighbor that you did something that was so stupid? It's absolutely ridiculous to tell a neighbor, hey, I was a transgender and I've detransitioned. Pretty embarrassing to go through a gender change, uh, to be that stupid, to believe that you can actually change genders. You got to be pretty um, ill-equipped to handle the truth. I was born in Los Angeles to a good family, good people. I was taken to my grandmother's house quite frequently as my parents 
like to go away on the weekend. They like to camp and fish. I somehow became interested at my grandma's house in cross-dressing, and I had mentioned something to her about that. So she decided to make me a purple dress and allow me to put it on and wear the dress. I finally got so interested and excited about wearing the dress that I got tired of waiting till I was gonna go to grandma's house to secretly cross-dress, so I snuck the dress home. But my mom found the dress, and so then dad got upset. Um, I was never allowed to go to grandma's house again. The first step was I changed my name uh, secretly when I was about 13 years old to Crystal. Probably in my late 20s, uh, I started to talk to doctors about hormone therapy, and I began to take hormone therapy. 35 years ago, there wasn't much information, and we concluded that uh, based on everything that was available at the time, that undergoing hormone therapy, further hormone therapy and gender reassignment surgery would be the answer to resolve this, quote, um, gender identity disorder. That's when I, uh, in April of 1983, I underwent the gender reassignment surgery by Dr. Uh, Biber in Trinidad, Colorado. It was amazing. I felt like the world had been lifted from my shoulders and it was all really wonderful. The only thing I don't know is, was it all the medication from five hours of surgery that made me feel this way or was it because I'd gone through the surgery because you're pretty heavily medicated. My uh, female name at the time was Laura Jensen. Lompoc is, is a nice town. It's quiet and it's small. I was a little bit apprehensive going in, into surgery, but also a little excited too. Finally, we're at this point. And after going into uh, surgery and then coming out of surgery and uh, being in the uh, elevator. I asked somebody, is it gone? And they assured me that it was gone. And I, I was very relieved. I was losing a lot of blood through the surgical site. Uh, what they did was kept putting gauze uh, into my new vagina, but I was excited. I was excited that finally this is done. This is now behind me. So now I'm starting my new life. I never had the full ability to have intercourse because the, the, the vagina that they make is so small. So anytime I tried to have intercourse, it was extremely painful and, and it wouldn't happen. So these surgeries are nothing more than plastic surgery. They, they don't create um, the phalluses that they create for female to males are really hideous looking. I've, I've had several female to male friends and you look at it and you just go, oh God, you paid for that, it's horrible. The sex change didn't solve my discomfort. The doctors who are honest will say that the gender dysphoria is always there. And it's because the confusion is, it's not so much, it, it starts out being about your anatomy, but really what it's, it, you don't like yourself. Being a freak in society, being, a, a, I call it in my book, a social pariah, is not the way you want to live. The isolation drives you to despair. And so, yeah, suicide is a big, big thing. Maybe you can remember the exact day when you thought about committing suicide, and how did you stop yourself? Yesterday, I don't know. Um, the first time was um, right before the surgery in 1990. And it, the only thing that kept me from doing it, quite honest, is I'm a coward at heart. I just was so deeply disturbed. At the time, I wanted to end my life, and somebody I knew had some cocaine, so I attempted to use it to kill myself. And it obviously didn't work, but uh, my 
heart was pounding so hard after I took it that I thought it was going to come out of my chest. I feel safer having done that and not staying in one place very long where people might find out uh, what I do and who I am. I don't want people to know that are around me. I don't want to be um, outed by the people around me. I was leaving church one day uh, on Sunday, three, four years ago now, and I got an email that said, I'm ready to commit suicide. Can you help me? And it was a transgender who had lived the life, transgender life for two or three years and was totally discouraged with it. I was actually exchanging information and talking with him on some level up to five times a day to keep him from committing suicide. He eventually restored his life. He detransitioned de back. This is my entire office right here. My computer, my desk, my chair, my slippers. And this is where I sit and work. I don't need any more than this. Um, everything that I do is right here on the computer or on the phone talking to people. I've detransitioned now for 25 years, a little longer. And so it was when I detransitioned that uh, everything began to make sense to me. And when I realized that how important it was to detransition to become psychologically, emotionally, and socially a healthy person, that I wanted others who wanted to detransition to have a way to come back to that same experience that I have. And if they have regret and want to detransition, I've built a website for them, it's exchangeregret.com. How are you? I'm doing good today, doing good. How about you and KC? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing good. Billy uh, contacted me by email, like most people do, and we began to exchange information, and I talked to him on the phone. His story was just like mine. Um, he was sexually abused. I was sexually abused, and that was kind of the trigger point of changing genders. Come on, kids. Come on, come get your clothes on. Seven years after transitioning to woman, a woman, I started thinking, okay, I've been doing this for seven years now. My problems should have gone away from by now, but they hadn't. And I actually had more problems at that point. Another problem is just trying to pass. I'm trying to do my hair just right, trying to do my makeup just right trying to look just right to where people would not be uncomfortable because you can see when people identify you as being transgendered. I was like, this isn't life. I, nothing has really changed. I'm still struggling. I, I was better off as I was before the surgery, before the hormone treatment. So it was at that point, five years after the surgery, thereabouts, that I started to have thoughts about changing back. That's my student ID from uh, LSU. That's when I was swimming at LSU. I had a really uh, big Adam's apple, heavy brow ridge, uh, a pretty big jaw. This is uh, the ID after I had SRS surgery. And then, when I was transitioning back to male in Louisiana, that's the driver's license I got. I had a lot of other pictures from that period. But one day, uh, when I was sitting in my office looking at the pictures of me back during this seven year period, seven, eight years as being female, it was so discouraging that I wasted so much of my life in this particular period doing all of this that just in the state that I was in, I erased all of the pictures that I had off of the computer 
and destroyed the pictures of me from that period to try to erase that period in my life. With God's help, I went through the change and I went back to being male. So I went through that surgery and on the back side of it, I was in so much pain and uh, so much discomfort and regretted that surgery more than the first SRS surgery that I had. And then when he took the bandages off of my stomach to show me the skin graft, I, I was almost horrified at it. To me, it was gross. But it was by that surgery and the paperwork that the surgeon gave me saying um, when I had the surgery done initially, he gave me the paperwork that said, OK, I've been surgically changed to male. I'm 60 years old. There's no reason for me after a lifetime of being in transition to go and start living, uh, dressing as a man anymore. Um, there's, 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 no, um, there's, no, there's no benefit in it. But there is a benefit in my standing before an audience of young kids in college who are considering this path and saying to them, OK, I'm the real deal. I started living when I, uh, as a woman when I was 20. I've lived 40 years of my life. I've had breast augmentation. I've had genital surgery. I've had 40 years of hormones. All of it has not made my life any better. It's never solved the problem. You break your, your left leg. You go into a doctor's uh, office, and under the transsexual rule of medical treatment, they say, this is your new normal and we're gonna break your right leg too. I think it's safe to say that when somebody has been cross-dressed and uh, affirmed physically abused and sexually abused, that psychotherapy is the most uh, needed therapy, not hormones and surgery. When I met Rachel, I was already legally a man again. Hey, baby doll. How was your day? Her and her daughter came over to my house for a Fellowship of Christian Athletes meeting. And it was there that I first met her. And that was in 2010. And from there, I invited her for a coffee. And I didn't know what that meant. So I asked one of my classmates, what does that mean? <laughs> one of my younger classmates. So, um, so she said, well, that's a safe way for asking for a date or trying to meet up with somebody. I shared with her my past and what had happened and how I was. And at that time, she said, OK, let's be friends. We had shared the same interests, like what I was saying. We both like doing, especially swimming, um, but triathlons. We liked hiking. I don't know. I can't. I know he will say he remembers one time we went on a hike, and we sat down for a rest and on a bench. And I kind of sat close to him and <laughs> put my head on his shoulder. And it was at that point I knew our relationship was changing and uh, that it was OK for me to start pursuing Rachel in a romantic way, and I did. Excellent. You're good. The intimacy between Rachel and me, with me being surgically altered, I cannot come to an orgasm. Um, so, Rachel and I, we enjoy intimacy. Oh, isn't that wonderful fresh air? Fresh air is good. <laughs> it is beautiful, and I'm praying for a little bit more rain, because if you notice up here, the green is starting to turn back to brown. He asked me pretty soon, after a few months, if, if I'd marry him. And I think I thought about it for not too long, maybe a week or two and responded yes. My older daughter said it probably best is she want, they wanted me to be happy. Mm. 
and I knew I was going to change back. But the, the big moment came when um, I, I was praying, and uh, the Lord Jesus uh, appeared to me um, as a vision in the prayer, as though I could touch him, just like I could touch anybody here. And um, he came and reached down to me with his hands and picked me up and um, said, you're now safe with me forever. And it was at that moment that um, my life changed in a split second. Look at this, I'm healthy. Uh, many of the people who've gone through this before me are dead. They're alcoholics. They're still struggling um, with their identity. And I'm uh, alive and well and healthy and married for 21 years to my wife. Uh, that's, that's redemption, restoration and I'm helping other people. What other thing that's better in life when you're reaching out and helping other people with their life? Uh, to you, babe. Oh, to I you. love you. I love you. Did you taste it? Mm -hmm. That's kind of tough. Mm, it is, but it's right. still pretty. But it's still pretty tasty. I am so happy I am the way I am now. Uh, even though I have problems, I have a choice to let my problems uh, burden me or to look up, to see each day as a beautiful day and just to enjoy life. In his hands, he's got you and me, baby. In his hands, he's got you and me, baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands.